So, Spencer, Liberty Victoria's stated mission includes defending existing civil liberties and opposing their limitations, as well as campaigning for the enlargement of these liberties. In this context, how do you see the reality of these freedoms currently in Australia? And specifically, what has WikiLeaks and the response to Julian Assange by the Government of Australia revealed about the health of our civil liberties? Well, um, in relation to your first question about how well freedom of expression and speech is defended in Australia, I have to say not nearly well enough. Whereas <coughs> most countries in the world have constitutional protections for free speech, uh, or at least free speech is protected in Acts of Parliament, we don't have any protection of that kind. The only real protection we have for freedom of expression in Australia is um, the somewhat complex one of an implied right to freedom of political communication, which has been determined to exist constitutionally by the High Court of Australia, but it's such a technical protection that very few people will be able to avail themselves of it. And that's one of the reasons why the United Nations Human Rights Council recently uh, asked that Australia implement um, a fully-fledged Bill of Rights. The second part of your question uh, relates to WikiLeaks. Um, I think that we have a really serious um, uh, issue with freedom of speech um, as it exists around the WikiLeaks disclosures. Um, what has happened since the first WikiLeaks disclosures some six months ago, and more recently with the disclosures of the US cables, is that um, Western governments, including the Australian governments, are making concerted efforts to close WikiLeaks down and to prosecute its director, Julian Assange. Now, what WikiLeaks has done is simply um, disclose um, previously leaked cables uh, and other forms of information about Iraq, Afghanistan, and more recently about the um, views of the United States diplomats um, in relation to global affairs. And for the most part, the disclosure of all of those documents has been strongly in the public interest. But the reaction of the United States government and, sadly, the Australian government has been to describe these disclosures as constituting an illegal offence. And when not describing them as a form of illegality, to say that they have been reckless and irresponsible. And consequently, um, the Australian government, in harmony with the United States government, is currently conducting an exhaustive examination of whether or not there are any serious criminal offences um, which WikiLeaks may have broken. And the threat of criminal prosecution, of course, is also designed to silence the director of WikiLeaks and the organisation itself. So we have an immensely serious problem. So is a Bill of Human Rights, as it's been part of your campaign for many years, mm. if that charter had had been accepted and legislated, mm. what would be our experience now, do you think, in relation to WikiLeaks and to Well, I don't know that it would be much different because um, at the moment we're at the stage of threats. Right. We're not at the stage of any prosecution and no charges have been laid. So in those circumstances, uh, we'd be in exactly the same position. If charges were laid, uh, and if a trial were to take place, then of course the Charter would come into effect, um, and any laws that contradicted the terms of the Charter may be capable of being uh, struck down. So that would make it different. Liberty Victoria's key message is the price Spencer, talk about the fundamental role of people in relation to upholding universal right and liberties, and speak to the Australian people about how you see their role at this pivotal time when the practical status of their rights are becoming unclear in light of the treatment of Julian Assange. Well, uh, it's difficult to speak in very general terms about the role of people. Um, 
all I'll say about that is that for those people who are interested in and committed to freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of information, and who read the, the newspapers intelligently and thoughtfully and with a view to taking action, uh, everyone um, that falls into that class of people should now be deeply concerned about the attempts to silence Julian Assange and Wikileaks. Uh, and for that reason, it being the most significant free speech issue that faces Australia currently, I'd encourage any person who is concerned about this matter to join uh, organisations such as Liberty, other Civil Liberties Council, uh, Amnesty, um, church organisations like the United, United Church, Uniting Church Human Rights Committee, um, any um, significant human rights organisation, and get involved and try to make sure that when disclosures of this kind occur, essentially in the wider public interest, and essentially in order to promote, promote openness, transparency and accountability in government, that the people's voice and their own voice is heard in relation to the matter. Julian Assange has very recently stated that he would like to return to Melbourne. He is concerned about the federal government rhetoric um, or response so far. He has indicated that he is buoyed by and heartened by um, the strength of support that he's heard from the Australian people. What is your sense in having watched these conversations? Well, um, the government's initial response to um, uh, Julian Assange um, following the disclosure of the first tranche of documents um, uh, was seriously flawed in my view. Um, the Prime Minister declared her belief that um, Assange had engaged in some form of illegal activity and in doing so um, effectively denied him the presumption of innocence and potentially prejudiced any fair trial that he may, may have in Australia. Um, following a great deal of criticism of that initial statement, the Prime Minister has backed off from that position and now says, well, um, the foundation of the disclosures was an illegal act, as opposed to saying Julian Assange himself was engaged in an illegal act. But the Australian government um, was very slow to offer consular assistance to Julian Assange. Uh, and that was deeply regrettable. Um, consular assistance was offered to him only after the intervention of the Foreign Minister, uh, Kevin Rudd. Um, so at least uh, we have gone one step towards giving him the rights and entitlements that any, any citizen of, of Australia who is charged with a defence overseas ought to have. Um, uh, my sense still, however, is that uh, the government would not welcome him back in Australia. Only yesterday the Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, said that if he were to return, or were to want to return, um, she um, would be opposed to any return uh, unless and until all criminal proceedings against him in foreign countries had been completed. Now, if you look at the extradition proceedings to which he's subject, um, those proceedings uh, will probably continue um, on appeal um, eventually to the European Court of Human Rights, probably for the next 18 months or so. Um, so effectively she's saying, we won't have you back for a year and a half, thank you very much. Um, and that's deeply unfortunate. So thank you for spending time with us, Spencer. We're looking forward to your presentation tonight and offering it to the citizens to download and to Thank you very much for having me. Just before you go, Spencer, oh, this is sorry. Is there anything that you want to say? Is there anything that you want to say that is pressing? No, I think it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I think we got through the main points. Okay, great. Thank you. Is that okay? Yeah, you're great.
Okay. Yeah.